Okay, we were talking about CSS selectors. You know that you have the class selector that allows you to apply rules to a lot of elements. For example, I can have the background blue applied to several. You have the tag selector that doesn't specify any particular special name to it, like like with a class that you would have to, for example, you can say, this one you can call it BG blue, and you know that every every element that you apply the class BG blue, it's gonna be with background blue. With the selector, you cannot apply apply the classes later. You have to just use what you have. So, for example, I can say any div will have the text color. I want to make it red. So, if you come here and you are, let's do it with with a span. I think it's better span. And then let's also apply a display block because spans don't have backgrounds unless you apply display block. We can talk about this later when we review the display property. So you can see here that my span is red, but if I decide also to apply the class to this spam, if I apply class BG blue, I'm making the background blue span. So if I run it again, now you will find it with, but maybe I have another spam, you know, that is not this one. Maybe I have another spam and that other spam doesn't have the background blue. It's just normal. So we will have now two spams. One with the background blue, one without the background blue. Okay, so there's another selector that we talked about before, but not in, in a formal way in the instructions. It's called the ID selector. So if I apply the, the ID button one, the ID selector, for example, if I say that this one is button one, instead of being a dot, like the class that has a dot, you can see it here. Instead of being a dot, here's the dot. Instead of having the dot, it has a pound. But you don't have to put the pound here. The same way you didn't have to put the dot at the beginning of the class, you don't have to put it you don't have to put the hash or the pound. You don't have to put it in the HTML, only in the CSS. So I applied to this button. I applied that particular class. Let me remove the other classes. And now I'm going to build it. And you will see. Let me remove the background as well. This one from the spam. You can see that this one looks a little bit more like a button. It actually doesn't look like a button, but it's starting to look like a button. If I want to make it a button, I will have to apply more, more things to it, like a padding, for example. A padding with, uh, let's say, five pixels. That's going to make it be a little bit uh, separated from the edges. You see, this one was together, separated. Together, separated. That's padding. That's more like a button. And then if we really want to make it like a button, we will have to start using like a 3D effect. The 3D effect, depending on how the website is built, because some websites have buttons without a 3D effect. I can just put a border. Uh, a border of one pixel solid. And then it's going to look like some website's buttons. Uh, if I build again. You see, that's more similar to a button when it doesn't have a 3D effect. So yeah, you can use the ID, but what happens like what happens if I apply another ID to this one and I, I apply the same ID and if I build it? The the weird thing is that it's gonna work. Look both even though ID doesn't it's not ideal or it's not meant to be used in several elements, it can be used and that's something that I don't like about CSS. It should be consistent. If you want to use button one twice, why not make it a class? You know, just put a class here, put a class here, and then you make this a class and it will still work. So IDs should not be used as classes because when you finally get to JavaScript, you will be using IDs a lot as well. And if you have two elements with the same ID, it will give you problems. So don't use ID. I did it when I was a uh, senior, a John junior developer, and I regret it. I did it like for years or maybe two years. So that's it.